Hello artists, how are you today? Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here near Willow Creek, California. Oz and I welcome you to the studio. Well, this is today's project, Build a Doodle ATC. Now, I am definitely not um, doing these in just doodle time frame. I am making sure that they are a little bit nicer because I will be sending out four ATCs to four randomly generated people. Um, if you would like to be part of our ATC exchange, you need to jump on over to Messy Hand Band of Artists. Um, it is our Facebook group, and we do do a quarterly ATC exchange. All the details will be there. The link for the Facebook group is down in the comments. So just jump on over to Facebook, type in the Messy Hands Band of Artists, and... Um, <laughs> It was the original one. And um, then you can become part of the group and check out the announcement and you'll get all the details. Uh, the sign-up deadline, again, is September 25th, 2019. And we have an awesome group of people. Last I checked, I think we had 44 in this ATC exchange, but there's a good possibility we will have more. I'm 95% sure we'll have more than that. It's a very large exchange, so if you are not able to commit to it, please do not sign up. And if you have any issues with completing your task, please uh, contact us as soon as possible, either Kat or Cindy or I. Or, um, you know, you guys have almost a month to create these ATCs, so um, there really shouldn't be any reason if you actually decide to do it that you can't go through with it. I understand medical issues come up. Um, so I do understand that there are sometimes reasons why we can't do it, but if you sign up, just follow through and you need to talk to your partners and let them know that you're not going to be sending them their artwork. That's not the fun stuff to talk about. Uh, the fun stuff is to say, hey, you know, if you receive a card, post and say thank you over on Messy Hands. It's just the polite thing to do. Uh, rules, regulations, they are listed over at, <clears throat> again, Messy Hand Band of Artists, the announcement that's pinned to the top of the page. What else do I know? Um, I have some new tags getting ready to send out to my brand new Patreons. Patreons do receive a piece of small art from me when they join. And um, I, I do have a video for these, but I think I will give those to Patreons. And um, once I, you know, have... A little spare time to do extra videos. A lot of them have little words on them and little sayings. I dream of stars that glitter. Um, you know, and if 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 it has something on there that you don't particularly like, well, you can always just put some other little word over the top of it, or put a little, um, you know, this can pull off and and just change it out and make it say whatever you want it to say. We can change these things. We're mixed media artists. That's what we do, darn it. We take things, we alter it, and we make them cool. Uh, so, yes, I'm finally done with my ATCs, uh, I have to say. It's been a bit of a struggle. I'm not going to lie. Working that small for me is difficult. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I was giving you guys really great art. And so I think I've done probably 10 ATCs uh, just to get four that I like. Um, and I may have lost one of them. So I might have to make another one. Um, these I'm not decorating up as much as I did the other two because I think that they are really elegant just the way they are. I think if I add too many dots to them that um, I will lose the simplicity of the leaf itself. Do you need to do something that is this intricate of a painting? No. Not at all. Remember guys, you can take your doodles that you've been working on. Flowers or um, trees or buildings or whatever um, and then you can just kind of cut those out and make it into a cool card make a fun background you do not have to do it the way that I do it I am doing it this way because I um, have to kind of have a high bar on what I am giving to people not that everybody shouldn't be doing their best work I just have to like try to make it super cool Okay, guys, oh, the, the fan's going, so it's kind of bugging my eyes here a little bit. Um, hopefully this gets to you here sometime on Monday. Um, I, Wednesday, we're going to start on a new project. Possibly. It'll be Wednesday or Thursday, so 
uh, we'll see. I have a possibility of another job that I'll be picking up. So uh, my job is going well. I'm just kind of picking up the, the swing shifts here where, uh, you know, there's not really a, a, a daily spot for me. So um, I don't know. It's fun. I like it. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm a little tired. But I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you know, life is fun. So, yay. Uh, yeah, Patreons, you're getting some cool stuff. Uh, if you're interested in Patreon, it's down in the comments. It does make a huge difference in my life, guys. And uh, the sooner I can get a few more Patreons, the sooner I can uh, be back at art full time. And that is my goal. It's my goal. I really miss being at the table and I feel myself getting really rusty uh, when I can't be there. All right, my dear, sweet, darling, amazing people. We will chat soon. Love you. Bye. Hello, artists. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm working on this cool tree project that I had found on Pinterest and wanted to do something similar to it. This was actually an image that I provided to Patreons and I went through with my uh, watercolor pencils and colored each individual square and then um, added water to them. When I'm here I'm just not really loving what's going on with um, the paint and I didn't love how it looked so after putting all this time into it I decided not to use it. Well there is that little study I think he's kinda cool I don't think that he's really going to end up being an ATC because I just think when I compare it to the other ones I'm gonna get you closer when I compare it to the other ones I like the other ones so much better so while this is an example of how you can have fun with a tree, um, again, I don't think, hold on here a second though, let's see if I can't, I just realized that there was a ton of yellow squares in there, and maybe if I take out some of that yellow, hmm. Okay, so here was my second try. That first one, I just couldn't make it look the way I wanted it to look, and so it's just like, okay, let's try over. Let's do something different. Let's see if we can make this one work. So I had done this little pumpkin study, very similar to this. Uh, last week, I tried to do this. It shouldn't be that tough. It's just a couple pumpkins. It shouldn't be that difficult. But, uh, you know, I, I haven't drawn that many pumpkins. So here what I'm doing real quick, though, is I'm showing you where the light source is coming from. So anything that's going to be where the sunlight hits is going to be brighter and warmer. It's going to be your, your kind of your most intense spot. And what you're trying to do is emulate the sun hitting that area. So this is your basics of shading. On the side opposite of the sun, you're going to put cooler colors, darker colors, less intense colors. So just think about the sun being warm and bright and think about the shade being cool. Now, um, as I go through this, you know, it, it looked a lot better than what I was seeing, you know, when I was working on it. I was getting very frustrated very quickly. And, you know, part of that is because I had been working late, working on the new schedule. So I'm going to bed after two o'clock in the morning. And, um, you know, then I had been working yesterday um, during the daytime. So, you know, life just gets a little bit frustrating sometimes and you're not always in the zone and you're not even really able to see what you're creating. 
So here's your cooler um, tones that I added in. And I knew that I would be bringing in some, well, I'm using the Arteza watercolor pencils here, and I'm still trying to get a good grasp on them. Um, I think they give a really cool painterly effect. I'm not a pro at mixing all of the colors yet, but look at the great brush strokes. Now, while I was doing it, I was like, oh my gosh, all these brush strokes. And now as I'm watching it, I'm just like, gosh, that's, that's really beautiful um, effect that you can get with using these watercolor pencils. I really do like the intensity of color, the way that you can really put the uh, pigment down where you want it to be. Things that I still need to practice, of course, are, uh, you know, adding those colors over the top of it. And, you know, m maybe that's because I'm used to mixing um, colors on a canvas more than um, pulling out separate colors of pencils to get, you know, just put that one color down and leave that color there. I'm not very good at that. I, I like to you know, layer my colors. And the watercolor pencils don't really seem to love to layer. Um, now, that's not entirely true, but um, I just need to learn to pick up the different colors of pencils and use them that way. So what I'm doing here is you see where that sun is going. I'm trying to put a little bit of shadow on the back side of it. Now, granted here, guys, I didn't end up finishing um, this. One thing that I do find difficult about the watercolor pencils is you see how quickly you can move that pigment. Sometimes that's a little bit difficult for me. And that's just really the transition from moving between watercolor pencils and acrylic paints, just getting used to it. Wasn't happy with that one. So I tried again. Okay, well, I'm 0 for 2 at this point in time, which means I'm not having the best of luck doing this project. Tis the build a doodle fall ATCs. Okay, let's try it again. Now, this painting actually had turned out pretty cool until the very, very end. And then I kept trying to, you know, save it from where it was at and I just ended up spending way too much time on it. But here, let's talk about the joy of using watercolor and look at all of that beautiful color that you can lay down very quickly and just kind of letting the paint do its thing. Well, now, when I'm bringing that orangey red into the blue, um, it's creating browns and the yellows are creating greens. At first, it just doesn't really look like much, but once I start to really define the shape of the leaf, it really turns out to be a beautiful little study. You know, here I'm coming in with the splatters. And when I'm doing these leaf shapes, I think the splatters really do add a lot of interest to that. And, you know, if you look at a leaf as it's changing or changed, there's a lot of different variations of color within that leaf. And that's what I keep kind of playing with. So I'll end up doing this same technique on the last ATCs that I do. So be sure to watch this to see how I did that. I, you know, I just kind of repeated the same process. Um, but that's, you know, the, that's how I get this effect is to just put down the colors, let them kind of play and add in some splatters and really just, um, you know, try to, I don't really have a definite form in mind when I do this. I don't have a specific leaf. So if you go out in nature and you find 
leaves uh, changing colors. That's going to be your best way to do it. I love this splatter of red and I actually really do like the splatters going into the water. So for me, um, especially living here by the river, <clears throat> I'm really fascinated when leaves float by on the water, the reflections, the shadows, um, all of that. So here I am coming in with my Signo 207 Impact Gel Pen, and I believe I have that done in my Amazon list. And I'm using the Arteza watercolors and really enjoying that in the water the water brushes. Those are very awesome also. So I'm really, really enjoying what's happening with this. And then the next thing I do is I bring out my Micron pens and I start to outline all of the little dots in the leaves. And this effect was turning out super cool. Um, but sadly, I took it a step too far. Um, here, though, this little painting was really, really fun. Um, but as you'll see here, I will be ruining this in just a moment. Well, it doesn't look so much like a leaf anymore, does it? Okay, here we go. What I did this time was I decided to do two at once. And the reason for that is I wanted to keep them smaller. And every time that I gave myself a little bit more space, I ended up making the artwork too big. So I've put down the paint with the Arteza watercolors once again, but now I'm coming in with the Derwent ink tents. And the reason why I chose the Derwent over the watercolor pencils is because I needed something that was really going to be able to layer on top of those watercolors really well and, and still get a very nice blendability. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm just adding a little bit of water to the lead itself, which makes it kind of, um, well, it, it gives it more of a paint effect when you put it down. And I'm just trying to get some nice um, shapes in the water. And then I'll also be coming through and doing a similar technique within each leaf itself. So you know, there are shadows that are created by the leaf itself. And um, I was really also pushing the stark contrast between the blue and the orange and the yellow, um, you know, playing with those opposites. Here I'm bringing a red line in uh, to show the veining. And, you know, if you bring in like a black or a brown, which I think I tried here at one point, you know, if you bring in the wrong color, you really do feel it quickly. So um, more splatters just because I love that effect. And I really love it in the water also. It just kind of gives it a, a nice interest. Just learning how to how to paint with the watercolors and learning how to use the tools that I have and seeing what um, effects I like. If you don't like to splatter paint, please definitely don't do it. Um, do what works best for you. For me, I love the little mm, molten effect that it gives us. I don't know if that's the right word, but okay. What I'm also thinking about here is trying to create some. Um, difference in um, a kind of playing with the shading, uh, playing with the shapes. I'll be working on kind of um, making, instead of looking at it from like the top where you'd be looking at it from the side, 
I don't know if I really accomplished that yet. Yeah, but a few more tries with this, and I think I would have it you know, where I'd be really happy. Um, and plus, I do think that it would be really good for me to go out and get some actual fall colored leaves. We just don't really have any that are yellow right now. Um, and you know, to take pictures and to really see how it looks. Uh, I think it's a really fascinating subject matter for me. I love the contrast of colors. And um, so that's why I just kind of keep falling back to this leaf on water feeling. Um, you know, there's a line in one of my favorite movies was uh, river runs through it and says I'm haunted by waters. And that is very, very true. For me, I love love being around the water. I love watching the water and how the sunlight reflects on it and how things are affected by it, how the wind changes. Um, you know, always wanted to paint water really well. And I guess maybe it's time to go out and start studying it and, and painting it while I'm doing it or drawing it while I'm doing it. So here again, I'm coming in with some darker reds and, uh, using red instead of brown for those little leaf veining and then I'm bringing in the yellows to get more highlights in the center and then I'll probably come in with a little bit more water again and the splatters over the top that one of those yellows is um, you know less transparent and I'm using it very thick so it's going over the top of these things generally layering with watercolor it'll work to a point but um, you know too much layering and you can just get it kind of muddy so um, I think I talk about that here coming up shortly but thanks so much guys uh, there is more to this video but I think I start talking so you don't have to listen to me voiceover anymore have a great day please hit subscribe bye all right so it's got a little muddy in here. Let's see if we can't fix that up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna trim these guys up before I go any further. And uh, the main reason is, you know, I don't wanna, this, I just, here's another attempt, you know, it, it's, it's just frustrating, so. Okay, we're gonna trim this up and see what happens. All right, so I'm gonna see I can't kind of glue this down here just a little bit. I'm just going to kind of try to see if we can't make this come up a little bit more. We're just going to work on the shading here a little bit. So we're just going to speed up over these last little um, bits of coloring here. Again, just trying to bring in um, the brightest colors uh, to the front and a little bit bluer tones to the back. So even with a small object like this, we always want to try to create depth and um, you know, 
depth with color is important. Cools and warms. Warm will always come forward. Cool will always recede. So, you know, the, these leaves really turned out quite beautiful. And, um, you know, I might be practicing more of them just because I think that they're really interesting little shapes. Um, you know, if you are interested in doing more of this type of work, absolutely. Again, just go out, find some leaves and then start painting them. You know, uh, use your imagination and and uh, enjoy the process. And this is meant to be kind of that happy zone time. Of course, by this time, I was pretty frustrated, but um, I didn't give up. I had to keep pushing through. And eventually, you will come up with a piece of art that you really like. So I showed you all of these mistakes, um, all of the pieces that I didn't like. I showed you that specifically because you guys need to know that I don't always get it on the first try. It's not always easy and that's okay. It's well worth it in the end.